Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Dave, and we're the IB English Guys. This is our last video of our Paper 2 start to finish, and today we're going to talk about a complete Paper 2 response and really break it down and talk about our kind of final score for this paper. Mr. Giles, it's been a pretty busy process. We looked at two stories individually. We did some comparative chart work. We made a rudimentary outline. We generated a thesis. We talked about intros, body paragraphs, conclusions. Here we go. It's the yeah. whole paper, right? And this paper was written in an hour and 45 minutes, by the way. This wasn't something that someone wrote for four hours. So keep that in mind, like that this a student wrote this in that amount of time. So first of all, we need to consider the question that was being asked. What is the question, Andrew? The question is, how do two of the works you have studied portray the struggle to be understood? Of course, we've talked about the keywords and we've broken that question down in earlier videos. Mr. Jaws, what was the rudimentary outline that we arrived at? Yeah, so there's four comparative points. The first comparative point are the circumstances of the father's conflict in a family supper and then the, fa the circumstances in stones. The second comparative point is looking at the characterization of the fathers and how they are developed and how they struggle to be understood. And the, the third comparative point is how the fathers express their emotion through different means. In a family supper, they're using cooking. In, uh, in stones, they're using violence and alcohol. Um, and finally, looking at the endings of the stories and how they are overcoming that struggle to be understood. Yeah. These are the comparative points. Yeah, of course, those comparative points are critical. That's where we want to emphasize in our body paragraphs. We did have a complete thesis as well, uh, and our thesis was, while the circumstances of their struggles are vastly different, the two fathers in a family supper in stones both struggle to articulate their feelings and cope with their emotions. This struggle has dire consequences for the family dynamic and in both cases results in fragmentation of discord, okay? So we've got our thesis. What do you say we just dive into this paper and start talking about what we notice as examiners? Yeah, I like that for sure. So first of all, let's look at the introduction. We noticed that I like the student so thinking about this, this struggle to be understood and thinking about, actually they're framing it in terms of, of males who have trouble articulating their emotions. That That's kind of nice. I like the way that's being explored there. Yeah. The beginning. So they declare the topic. Now we need to give our reader a snapshot of both of these texts, a summary, but with an eye on the question and an eye on our topic. So we see that we have A Family Supper by Ishiguro, and then we have that short description. We immediately follow that up with In Stones by Timothy Finley, and then we give a short description of that text as well. Mr. Giles, this student looks like they're from our class. They're doing what we tell them to do. Yeah, I mean, they talk about the father's struggles to share his affection and then the father's inability to express his feeling. That's about the struggle to be understood. I like that. And then we have that nice comparative thesis. Notice it's two sentences. We're thinking about using the language of the question. And then we actually have a, a what, what, what's the result of this struggle to be understood? That we love that phrase fragmentation and discords. And nice, what's the right. phrase are about? I want to remind you students as well that, hey, don't be afraid to make your thesis statement into two sentences. You don't want to sacrifice grammatical accuracy just because you're trying to pack in a bunch of ideas. You want to make sure that thesis is clear and precise, okay? So yeah. don't think, make sure you think about that. We're going to look at two body paragraphs side by side. Why do we do that? Mr. Giles, we need to look at them side by side because we know in body paragraph one, we've talked about text A, and in body paragraph two, we've talked about text B in relation to text A. So that's why we want to look at them in pairs. We'd expect to see the majority of our comparative language in the second paragraph of that respective pair. Mr. Jaws, what do you notice in paragraph one of this pair? Well, I notice, first of all, that these this is about the circumstances. So we're establishing right away this part of the from the rudimentary outline, thinking about the circumstances and their conflicts, about how they're different. I think that's really, really wise. I also see some references to um, literary elements that are there and some of the some of the the way that these circumstances are described. I, I, I think that that makes sense. It does make sense. I also noticed that in the topic sentence, I see the phrase struggle, struggle to be understood. I also see those words not understood in the concluding sentence of that paragraph. To me, that illustrates that this student has really good focus, okay? Uh, Mr. Jaws, I also noticed that this paragraph's a bit short. What are your thoughts on that? I think for, you know, considering that this student has four different sets of comparative points, so they want it as a very ambitious, rudimentary outline. I think that's all they have time for. But they've established 
some very important aspects of the circumstances of their situation, but they're doing it in a literary way. Yeah. They're talking about the author's choices and what the authors are doing. Yeah, I'd much rather see paragraphs of this length and big bricks uh, when I'm examining, right? Yeah. Those are tough to get through. I, I appreciate yeah, it. Subsequent paragraphs maybe have a little more substance to them and more more detailed references, but so far, I think there's an understanding here. Let's keep going. And yeah. They had. Now, the second body paragraph here, we'll notice that we are still looking at the circumstances we have that focus on struggle, but this time we're looking at it in relation to, we're looking at stones in relation to a family supper. Where do you see that, Mr. Giles? Well, I see that in the very first word of the paragraph, we have conversely, so we have a comparative transition, but then also we, we're kind of talking about how his situation is more dire than the family in a family supper. Great sense, right? It's important to actually, you're comparing their circumstances. Yeah, it is, it is clever. We also see that mention of atmosphere. I think that's a really nice thing for students to tap into. You want to think about atmosphere. Does it create tension? Perhaps, I'm just saying perhaps, it might have been nice to then compare that choice of atmosphere to a family supper a bit more. Thinking about, okay, atmosphere was created by Finley this way. How was atmosphere created by Ishiguro? That, yeah, that's might, right. have, that might have been an extension. Because there's some big atmosphere in a family. Yeah, so that's, about. I, I'm not upset point. about that, but I think, hey, there was a little bit room for growth there, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so the next two body paragraphs are indeed a little bit longer. We notice, first of all, in that first body paragraph, looking at a family supper, I like how there's a transition. These circumstances are reflected in the characterization of the father. I think that's nice. It is. It shows that they're, you can't just pull this paragraph out and put it anywhere. This paragraph must come after a circumstance paragraph because yeah. it's connected and really tightly wound that way. So that's a really good connector for me. I like the word exposition. It just shows that you know the different elements of short story. You know this is the beginning of the, where the characters are exposed. I think that's wise. It's nice. They're weaving that in. They're talking about the narrator. And actually having some nuggets of language in blue, like the stony jaw, the black eyebrows, and the pure samurai blood. So nice sort of nuggets of language to help show the characterization of the father. I know where they're going. I agree. I do like that the student has used the word Ishiguro. Again, the author's doing, he's in the driver's seat here. We're not talking about the text. We're talking about how Ishiguro makes choices to shape meaning in the text. Lastly, in this first paragraph, I love that we tap back into understood and struggle in the concluding sentence. Students focus, Mr. Giles. Yeah. I mean, you have to be. You have to repeat the language of the question. You're, this is your job, and you need to keep that in your mind throughout every paragraph. So if you feel a little repetitive, it's probably better to be a little repetitive than not to really pay homage to the question. Okay, the next body paragraph is our comparative paragraph. Again, this is where we want to look for that comparative language. All those underlying phrases, in contrast to, unlike family supper, he is not formidable like the father in Family Supper, like the narrator. Boy, this person really has their comparative hat on. They really do. They understand the necessity to compare and contrast. I also see that rich literary lens. They haven't forgotten Criterion B to look at authorial choices. Characterization, imagery, narrator, narrator, tension, characterization, broad authorial choices, paper two. This student's crushing it, Mr. I Jones. like the phrase, this imagery makes it seem like he has shrunk. That's a good. That's a good line. That's short, but like he's like getting smaller. Ooh, I like that. Don't forget about the long sentences and the short sentences. You want to have variety as a writer. Are we okay to move on? To yeah, next? we're ready. So let's move on the next set. Yeah. So now we're thinking about how they. If you remember the outline, is how the fathers actually do ex try to express their emotions through nonverbal means. So that's that's good. I think we're, again we're thinking about the idea of cooking in a family supper. And the way that he's using food and fugu fish um, to to communicate, I like that. Yeah, and uh, looking at that second pair, and I notice again it's a bit shorter of a paragraph. I know the student is deep into the writing now; they might be looking at the clock, uh, which would make perfect sense, right? Uh, I see dialogue, and I see symbol again, and I do see that reference to the hammer, uh, and I see the comparative language being underlined again. So I know they're looking at text B in relation to text A, therefore satisfying that compare and contrast uh, elements. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and in a way, like the, you can see that the understanding and the detailed references are, are there because they're making reference to the fugu fish and some of the different elements that are there. So yeah, I like that. not to be nitpicky, but we do notice a little bit of a disappearing here of uh, the orange, and we might want to pay attention to that. You know, If we were to give this writer some advice, we might say, hey, man, make sure you keep that author in mind so that author's in the driver's seat, right? Yeah, so just... Right. Again, something to think about. Yeah, it's good. So finally, our our last set of paragraphs now are going to look at the endings of the stories and think about that struggle to be understood and how that might 
how whether they actually reach closure or not. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, again, what we're going to be talking about. What they do say is that both men do express their feelings to their sons that, who are the narrators in both stories. Again, this is so comparative. I like yeah, it. I like it because also the student has covered the beginning, middle, and end. And I think it's important to have comprehensive coverage of both texts. I like this. Again, we see that that notable nugget. There are other things besides work. The student's able to bring in that good textual reference. Of course, you don't need to memorize quotes, but the student remembered it. So why not put it in there, right? Right. That's referencing to dialogue and tone and and talking about foreshadowing. Ooh, I like this phrase, this might foreshadow. Talk about that, this might foreshadow. Yeah, might and perhaps. These are just, I think, wise words to include because you you might not be absolutely 100% sure. It actually makes you self it makes you sound um, more 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 open to other interpretations. So that word perhaps and might is a really nice way to take a little bit of a risk. Yeah. It's a possible interpretation. It's not the one interpretation. It's a possibility. It shows yeah. I'm thinking widely, right? That's right. Uh, the second half of this, this topic, we see, again, that transition with that comparative transition. And similarly, uh, and then in the concluding sentence, we see thus both men. So the comparative hat is still on from beginning to end, Giles. What else do you notice? Yeah, an attention to the wording of the question to be understood and communicating feelings and communicating truths. Very nice way to put that. So they don't, they don't always use the phrase understood, but they're really thinking about communication. That's what the question is asking. Uh, of course, the conclusion we looked at in the last video, we see a restating of the thesis. We see a synthesis of ideas and we see a strong final idea. So for us, that is a complete paper. The student has finished the paper. Giles, let's get into the scoring. Criterion A is understanding and interpretation. This is out of 10. A lot of points allocated here. Where are you at? A lot of points. I I put this at an eight. I think it is very strong in terms of understanding of the text. I think it's strong answer to the question. I think it needs a little bit more nuance and perception to be pushing it into that top band. And I think looking at further implications, further subtleties, this is what I think is important. Yeah, and when we think about that notion of implications, it's like readers can infer that, we can imply that, it can be concluded that. Uh, the implications are clear, colon, big sentence, big idea, right? So there's there's a little bit more work to be done there, I think. Yeah. Agree. So I, I have all that eight also. What would you say about criterion B for analysis and evaluation? I, I also would put this at an eight, and it seems nitpicky. I think there's plenty of yellow terms and I think they're explored in, 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 and they're explored well. So again, that this is a strong score, but I don't see enough comparison of those author choices. Mm-hmm. I think that could be a little bit stronger. Good point. I see a lot of compare and contrast of ideas, themes, messages, but like we mentioned before, while Ishiguro uses atmosphere this way, Finley uses it this way. So we want to have a bit more overt compare and contrasting of those authorial choices. That also pins me at B8. Uh, focus and organization, pretty darn good, Mr. Zyle. So good. I think this paper is, if you're going to look at this paper as a model, it's a model for how to structure a paper two response. It's got great attention to the question, which is the focus part, super focused. It's very easy to follow. It's got nice transitions, and there's so much great comparative language. I definitely would put this out of five. Language-wise, highly readable, highly academic, nice turns of phrase. Again, very um, grammatically uh, accurate. It's a D5. Folks, remember, you may find some errors in there. Mr. Giles, are you supposed to write a perfect paper with grammatical accuracy? Or no, no way. No way. You're, yeah. My friend Dave says you are under <laughs> duress. You're under duress. This is a tense yeah. moment. You're going to make a few errors, but I think overall the accuracy is very clear, varied language, registers amazing. So we pegged this at a 26, which would probably be... A, Give it a low seven. Yeah, I think that. And I think, or, you know, I think this is a low seven. If we were going to talk to this student, we would say, you know, aim for a little bit more nuance, aim for a little bit more insight, develop the, a couple of those paragraphs. Maybe need to be have a few more, uh, you know, subtle details mentioned, and then you'll be on your way. You're on your way. Here, authorial choice. Yeah. So the students right there, and we think that that will propel them for their next attempt. Okay. In the end, we hope that this paper two start to finish series has been helpful for you. We hope we've shown you the skills, the structure, and given you the confidence to write a strong paper. Uh, Go ahead and write your own paper, evaluate yourself honestly with the criteria, and then go back to our website and ask yourself, what skills do I need to remediate? It's all there. Go watch those individual videos for specific skills, and you will be ready for your paper too that's coming up, okay? Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time on the channel. Bye, guys.